Hi and welcome guys. Uh, today in this uh, tutorial, we are actually going to learn about uh, the very long description of the T flip flop. Previously, we had done D flip flop, SR flip flop, and JK. Uh, this time, we're gonna do T flip flop, and we know that one of the uh, property of T flip flop is actually it helps us to uh, do the toggling. Okay, and in this case unlike jk flip-flop it's control toggling so if you actually look at the schematic right here you basically have t which is connected to both j and k uh, which would mean t is zero uh, then j and k both are zero and we know when j and k both are zero if you look at over here uh, when t is zero j k and both are zero which means the next state is going to be the previous state so it's actually acting as a memory when T is 1, meaning J and K both are high, and we know when J and K both are high, the next state is actually going to be the complement of the previous state. And we know when clock is 0, regardless of what T is, um, the next state is always going to be the previous state. So based upon this truth table, we are going to describe the very large description <clears throat> of a T flip-flop. So let's begin. I already went ahead and created a new project. Uh, I'm using a basis 3 board, so um, I'm going to right click here and click add source, um, click add or create design source, next, um, I'm going to create a file, I'm going to name it T flip flop, click OK, click finish, uh, here I'm going to have my, so if you look at, go back to schematic, you got your T, you got your clock as in, inputs you got Q and Q bar as your outputs there's one thing that we have been doing uh, even though the clear and uh, clear is missing we're gonna include that so clock here as an input then we have clear as an input and then we also have T <clears throat> the input uh, then we have Q as an output and then we have Q bar as an output as well uh, let's click OK uh, and here's our skeleton code right here now we're gonna begin coding um, if you like you can actually declare uh, those your inputs as wire because those are going to be changing in your output as registers because you want the outputs to be stored okay um, and here we will start uh, our coding mm, so we have purpose saying always mm. positive edge clock and negative edge flare okay um, begin and then you say if there is equals to zero which means that we want our Q to be set to zero. I'll just say, yeah, and then Q bar set to be um, one because it has to be a complement of the Q, right? Um, <clears throat> else, and use a case word here, T. Um, if T is zero, in that case, we want our Q to be equals to Q. The Q, if we, we saw it, if when T is zero, the next set is actually equal to the present state or the previous state. So Q gets Q and Q bar gets <clears throat> Q bar. Okay. If T is one, and is one then next state is actually the complement of the previous state so the next state is actually going to be the complement of the present state or previous state or is also going to be the complement of q bar <clears throat> okay. and then we say n case here and then n two n's we got one for uh, this one right here and one for this one right here. 
So it looks like my code is ready and it's pretty simple. And I'll just go through it one more time real quick. I'm declaring my inputs as wire and my outputs as registers. Uh, looking at the schematics, I got this key in cloth and clear which is missing in this uh, diagram. And then I got a Q and Q bar as my outputs. And I'm using the positive edge of the clock and the negative edge of the clear. Uh, if clear is zero, I want the Q to be set to zero and Q bar to be set to one. If not, then when T is zero, uh, so this means uh, when T equals to zero, meaning when J equals to K equals to zero, um, then I want to be my, my, my Q to be set to Q and Q bar to be set to Q bar. And then when T is equals to one, which, which would mean when J equals to K equals to one, and that would mean that Q, my next state is going to be the complement of the previous state or the present state. So I got uh, Q semicolon. Uh, and then Q bar uh, gets a complement of Q bar. Okay, and then end case and the two ends and the end module. Let's go ahead and save this. Uh, looks like there were no error. We are going to synthesize this code. Um, takes a few seconds. So, all right. Uh, looks like it went through successfully. Uh, I'm gonna skip this run implementation. I'm gonna cancel this. I'm now going to work on these, uh, the test bench file. So I right click here, click add source, uh, click uh, create simulation sources, uh, uh, check, put a check there, click next, um, create a file, let's name it tff tfflop and store test bench. and then click OK, click finish. I'm just gonna skip this part, click OK. <clears throat> it's not being changed, you want to say yes. Okay, alrighty, my test bench file is here. Here's the skeleton. I'm going to prepare the code here. Okay, alright. So, I want my inputs to be uh, registers so clock clear and key because I want the values for these inputs to be uh, hold for a few uh, for a very sh short amount of time and then my outputs will be my wire because their values will change as the clock clear and key changes a Q, Q bar as my outputs and then I'm going to uh, instantiate the t flip flop which i just created so the file name here is tff make sure it matches with the file tff uh, here's the unique identifier t1 so i got my inputs t clock clear and then q and q bar my outputs <clears throat> i want my clock to turn on and off every 100 nanoseconds so i say um, hash hundred clock equals to complement clock, <clears throat> and then here's my stimulus. Um, initial begin. I want my t uh, to be set to zero, and then clock is one. Clock is also zero initially. And then declare is equal to one v one. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Remember uh, when the clear is zero, this is when it resets. Okay. Q gets zero and Q bar gets one. Okay. So initially it is one. Clear is one. Uh, now after hundred nanoseconds, I want this to change. Error is then set to v0. This means after 100 nanoseconds, Q gets 0 and Q bar gets 1, and then after 100 nanoseconds, it goes back to 0. Now I'm gonna uh, 
have my key input again toggle every 50 nanoseconds so I use this over here and then in and then in module so it looks like my code is ready I'm just gonna save this test bench file uh, hopefully there should not be any errors looks like they are not and as you see I saved the file the test bench is right here as a top module and underneath that you see the TFF which is the T flip flop we created earlier. So select the test bench file and then choose run simulation and then choose run behavioral simulation. Again it might take a few seconds so just be patient. So here is a simulation. Uh, I'm just gonna select full view. Uh, so here's my clock. I'm just gonna make my clock red. Uh, my clear blue, uh, my input T uh, gold, and then in the green are my. Hey, okay. so it looks like for the first 100 nanoseconds, if we look our uh, test bench file, we had clock set to zero and clear set to one, and then T was zero. Uh, and because clock is zero, it's actually just gonna. <clears throat> give us the uh, whatever the previous input which is looks like it's zero and one when the clock goes high but this is this is also the time when clear goes to zero and we know when clear is zero that means that q gets zero and q bar gets one okay so So Q gets 0 and Q bar gets 1, okay? Similarly, if we look at over here, uh, when clock is high, clear is high, okay? T is 0. T 0 would mean that your next state is going to be the present state or the previous state, whatever is in the memory. What What is in the memory? Memory is 0 so it's actually gonna be zero and then q bar is going to be high but when we go over here when clock is high but t then goes from zero to one and we know when t is one which means the next state is going to be the complement of the previous state so the previous state is one uh, oh, actually zero over here so when t goes to one here that is when the Q goes from 0 to 1, so it's toggling, okay? If you look at it over here again, um, when clock is high, clock is high, clear is high, T is 1, T is 1, and because the previous state was 0, so the next state is 1, and the Q bar is 0, and it goes so on, okay? So this is a simulation for T flip-flop. Um, we did the very long description for all the flip-flops now. I hope you enjoyed these videos. If you have any questions, please leave a comment uh, at the bottom. And I'll see you guys next time. Till then, take care. Bye.